So let's talk a little bit about typical object-oriented programming patterns, those that we saw already. One is the setters and getters. So assume that you have protected or private data members. Often we do them use protected members because that allows inherited child classes to also alter those data members. So we protect or, or use private for those data members to ensure encapsulation and forbid this direct access by the user. But how can we then make it possible that the user gets the value? Therefore, we have this idea of setters and getters. So, for example, we can have a function like a method like set underscore ij that allows you to set internally these variables i and j. But why do we now use m2 arguments? Well, it could be that i and j only a certain combination of those two variables can be set but they have to be set at the same time. Yeah, so let's say n must be somehow divisible by m or something like that. So it doesn't make sense to change one or the other. So you have to set i and j at the same time. And this function can then verify that the properties are correctly modified. And if they are, it changes these protected data members. Otherwise, it will return an error. How this works, we'll see in another time. Yeah, in this case, it's very simple. It, this set ij method, it will just set i to m and j to n. Okay, so it's nothing special. And we also had <coughs> a method out ij, which prints pretty much the values for debugging or for illustration purpose. Yeah, so what we may want to do you may want to create an object A, so you, an instance of it. Here we lowercase a. Then we read m and n, these two variables, and then we set i and j to m and n. And lastly, we print the value. Very simple usage, correctly, and it works. So what won't work is if you try to access now a private or protected variable directly. Yeah, we spoke a little bit about this visibility in the past, but now you see what will happen if you try to do so. Here in our class declaration, we have i as a protected variable. And now in our main function, we try to set from a the variable i as 4. The compiler will not allow that, because that's why we protected it or made it private in the first place, right? So the compiler will return an error and say, you know, in this line here, we declared it as a protected variable. So that is basically the support. It provides this kind of encapsulation and gives you even an error message if you try to use it wrongly. So far, what we used is we used public inheritance. And that's what we use in the following example. So we have a class B that we inherit from class A, the data members, which were I and, and J. And we also add a new data member, Kai. Okay, and we of course provide getters in setters, and in this case also a getter. What is a getter? Well, a getter allows you to get the value. So get k returns the value of k. Yeah, but it does not allow you to change it, therefore you have to call this setter function. Okay? Show does nothing more than printing it again. And uh, yeah, when we create an, an object of this instance, so b, as lowercase b, b actually is an instance of class a as well. So we can call b set ij m and, with m and n, and we can set from b call the function set k. This works seamlessly, and then we can call b dot show, which in this case will print out k. So when we declare inheritance, we have to choose the visibility for the, for the superclass members and how they will be inherited to our new class. This allows us to hide methods. Basically, it converts an is a relationship to a has a relationship. Well, yeah, so there are different ways of doing the same thing in C++. You have often the choice 
and um, I just present to you syntactically how it works, the discussion of which is more useful than the other is for another time. So let's assume, look at again at a class. If we declare a class name, so like class car, and we say is a public, inherits publicly from a superclass, like vehicle. So, so far we used public here as specification for accessibility. So what does public mean? If the base class member was public, public inheritance leaves it public afterwards. But if it was protected, public inheritance leaves it protected. If it was private, it doesn't be private anymore, it becomes hidden. Hidden means in your child class you cannot access this data member anymore whatsoever. It's really hidden and that's what the word private means, right? It's hidden for anyone that tries to use it. So now you can choose protected or private inheritance. Here is instead of public, what it means is when you make protect called protected, everything that was public becomes protected. So that means only you can call it or any subsequent child class can use this interface again. If it becomes private, well, that means only you are able to use it. Any which way private remains private and becomes hidden in any child class and any subclass from it. So it means when you use private inheritance, public becomes private or protected becomes private. And then when you try to inherit from such a class again, it becomes the base class, right? So it becomes was is now private, then it becomes hidden. Okay, so you can change this is a relationship to a has a relationship and a has a relationship or private can become basically um, this hidden state. So as this might be a bit confusing for you now, let's have a look at some examples. So um, yeah, well, hidden in a derived class also meant that, like I said, no direct access possible. So you have to use the member functions in the class, in the parent class to access those members, such as getters and setters. Yeah. You can never use any objects of a subclass um, in the parent class. So that means, like we said, once it becomes inherited hidden, the object is not anymore the same. Yeah, so if I inherit from a vehicle privately, I could get something new like, a, let's say, um, a truck. Yeah, but this truck is not anymore the same behavior as the original vehicle because any methods and any data that it had before is now private. Yeah, so that means the interface, the way we deal with it is, is changed. It's like um, um, one of these very safe trucks um, that you can find, you know, from banks that transport money, basically having no way of accessing the data. Okay, so in terms of an example, let's have a look. So we have a class A and we say here public interface, we give it a, just a data member, int val. Now we have a semicolon, of course, class B. And now we say public A. And in B, we have a, a method publicly like print. Okay, so that will be now my example. So here we can say C out. Um, using namespace SPD, of course, C out val. Okay, that's possible. So in class B, in the method print, we actually access val, which is an instance variable of class A, but it's publicly available. Yeah, okay, so we can, we can now 
print it out and access it directly. Okay, if we make this protected, we can still access it because protected means that any child class like B is able to access the value, right? So let me create also class C that inherits from class B, okay? Also in class C, it's possible still to access well. What well is meant? Well, it's the same well from class A, okay? If I make this inheritance here now protected, it means that anything that was private, uh, public here, will become protected. But, you know, that has no change here for well, right? It's, that's all right. But if I make it private, yeah, then I get a problem here. Now, int well from A is basically the same as it would be private int well here. Yeah? And a private object, data object or, or member function, ob or an object, whatever you put into this variable, yeah, or member function, will not be exposed. Yeah? It's hidden. So that means when I try to use here well, it says here, um, well is a private member of A. Yeah? So it's, it's not possible to access it anymore. So basically B does not behave like an A, it behaves slightly different, it is something different, but under the hood it consists of an A to some extent, yeah? It just behaves differently. Okay, I hope this is a little bit more clear and that's really what is meant here by hidden and protected. We can of course, you know, if something is protected and you inherit it protected, the chain can go on forever. Public inheritance can go on forever. It's only the private inheritance and how you deal with an object. Now let's add also a function um, void me a something that does nothing. I can call this function easily here in the print. That's absolutely possible. And I can absolutely call it here in this it's always this function, me a, but once I change it to private, me a becomes private in here, so it's not possible anymore to call the function here, right? It's, it, it's exactly like I would, would put it here as private and uh, protect it. Then I get the same message, but now I get it, of course, already for class C. Okay, you have to play with this. I know this is a bit, this concept has to be tried out as usual to make it fully understandable. Right. Um, yeah, and this remark here, how you can use one object as another, that has made mostly to do with polymorphism, and we talk more about polymorphism the next time. So it's not for today, so don't worry too much about it, but try to get the basic idea.